Hey guys, this is Tonner. Today we have the Peace Offering Upgrade Guide. So we've done a budget upgrade for 50 US dollars for this. Uh, I'm going to go through the deck and my thoughts on it and then talk about what I have added in and what I've cut. So first of all, the base pre-con thoughts. It's based around obviously drawing cards, giving friends cards, and overall just being a lovely little rabbit. There is some plus one, plus one stuff in here with a bunch of when an opponent plays a spell, get a plus one, plus one counter, but it's very much a group hug deck. The interesting thing about this, is, especially for a pre-con, is it has a couple different win-the-game effects already in the pre-con. Uh, there's a bunch of high-costed cards that I just don't think did enough for the game plan, which I've cut for some other stuff, which I think is going to be more valuable for trying to win the way that I want to win with this deck, which is silently sneaking up on a win and then just going like, boom, look, I gave you a whole bunch of cards. Why are you angry that I won the game? All right. So for my upgrade thoughts, I've done some extra protection for ourselves to help us reach our game plan and kind of encourage people to go hit other people, for example. Uh, add in, in a couple more win the game effects as well. So that way, you know, we have more options for that. More card draw too. Uh, but also we've got a smothering tithe in here, which, you know, may potentially make you an enemy at the table, but you're going to be handing cards out so much that getting smothering tithe in here is just going to be insane value, right? All right, so our additions. First up, I added Noble Heritage and Glunch the Bestower, both cards that are going to allow us to put some plus one, plus ones out onto our own stuff or other people's stuff, get us a little bit of protection with Noble Heritage, as well as make us some more friends with Glunch. Technically, we could get, you know, we could put plus one, plus ones on our stuff or draw a card for ourselves or create some treasures, whatever we want to do. And it's also a great way to make an enemy at the table because, or, you know, just Put yourself behind, I guess, because you could give all three options to everyone on the table except for one person. I just, I just find it freaking hilarious. Uh, we've got Edric here, which is going to encourage people to go hit other people because they get to draw cards when they hit, uh, deal combat damage on someone else. Sergeant John Benton is a crazy card. This card here is like, like you could make a fifteen dollar deck around this just this card here as a big group hug commander, but. He's going to potentially be able to like help chip away at other people, uh, especially because people don't really want to block him because he's going to come in and deal damage and then you get to draw cards. Everyone loves to draw cards. Who, what's sacrificing, you know, 10 life for 10 cards? We've got Sac Socrates and Yes Man, both ways to be able to allow us to draw cards or allow opponents to draw cards as well. Ghostly Prison and Propaganda for our protection. Do you know Propaganda's dropped down to like a 30, 40 cent card or something? Uh, if you look at the Assassin's Creed version of it, it's crazy. Uh, Ghostly Prison, they both do exactly the same thing. They just make it so that you can't get attacked unless people pay mana. We've got Nils, who does basically the same thing, except for creatures with plus one, plus one counters on it. So people need to pay based on those. And then Master of Ceremonies to hand out more money, more friends, more secrets to people, uh, either allow people to draw cards or create treasures or get citizens, and then you get to do that. We've got Smothering Tithe in here. As I said before, this is whenever an opponent draws a card. Uh, let's just take, for example, uh, what? Uh, Edric. Someone deals damage to someone else, then boom, you're getting a treasure as well, unless they pay mana. Struggle for Project Purity here. I just like the idea of like either choosing to let other people draw cards and then more card draw from there because we just want to... Like, you could potentially deck people out with this, which is just funny. Or you could do, you know, make it so people don't want to hit you by making them get rad counters and then have to mill their decks and then lose life from that too. Sterling Grove to protect all our enchantments. Like, there's not really a huge amount of mass enchantment removal as compared to single target enchantment removal most people will go like you know a single target removal this allows you to be able to do that as well as allow us to just search for our um like to tutor up our uh, smothering tithe i hate <laughs> and people are gonna hate it but smothering tithe is just hilarious in this deck free stride to look at this is my secret tech right this is my secret tech. It is going to ramp you so freaking hard. So whenever you commit a crime, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a land card from them onto the battlefield, tapped, put the rest on the bottom. This one only triggers once each turn. It is a very cheap card, but 
Did you know that giving people card draw, if it is a targeted ability, so you say target opponent draws cards, that is a crime. You are committing crimes with Mrs. Bumbleflower constantly, so you get to constantly be able to ramp so hard that you're going to make, you know, just so much mana that it's ridiculous. All right, we've got the second Doctor here to be able to hand out even more card draw, because why not? As well as give all players no hand size. So everyone's going to love the fact that they all have card draw, and then it's also protection for us. And then finally, our two new win cons. One is Jace. If you would draw a card with no cards in your library, then you win. Boom. And approach the second sun because of the fact we're going to be drawing so much. We can draw through to the second, uh, like second cast of this really easily. So you can get super quick uh, through the win through that. All right. So the cuts here, I'm not going to go through all of them particularly well. They're mostly cards that I feel, felt didn't really do too much for the game plan. Like Fey Burrow is going to get you like three mana and stuff. It's not a bad card, but I just don't think it suited what I wanted to do. Coiling Oracle, I didn't think I needed that much ramp when I've got other better ramp now. Um, you know, I, or Coveted Jewel is just so expensive. And yeah, it's going to get a lot of card draw out for people. Uh, but I just didn't like it. Realm Cloaks Giant, I have no idea why that card's in here. I just don't like that card in this deck. It's like board wipe for non-giants and stuff. And then it does, like, it's a big beat stick, basically. I don't know. Um, and you know, like Sphinx of Enlightenment, I think we just got better card draw with this other stuff. So I just kind of went and cut that stuff that just wasn't, I think, doing enough. Rishkar, I don't think we had enough like tokens to be able to put what plus one plus ones out onto to be able to make a huge amount of mana from that. So some more expensive upgrades you can add. Rhystic Study, just discourage everyone else from being able to play the game. Some stacksy kind of stuff. Nardu is a very interesting card because you could get a lot of stacks from him very easily. But <laughs> Um, Nadu also will make you get aimed, right? Like, he's a very, very strong card. He's going to be very strong in this deck. Trouble in pairs, draw more cards, throw it yourself and stuff to get your win cons pretty fast, make people not be able to have extra turns. Burgeoning here, get more card, uh, more battle, more lands out on the battlefield. And then doubling season. We've got a fair few token generators in here, not a huge amount, but enough that I think the doubling season would be good. Uh, and, you know, the fact that it doubles all our counters as well is huge. But that's it for today, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of this upgrade guide. And if you guys disagree with some cards, if you have something else you'd rather add in or overall what you think. I hope you guys had a wonderful day and goodbye.